Welcome back. Okay, we are back to talk all about reading now. We got it together. <laughs> Today you can pick up the new ninth book called in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series called Keeper of the Lost C Cities Stellar Loon. Young readers are in love with this series and we've got the author here to tell us all about it, Shannon Messenger. Hi, Shannon. Hello, thank you so much for having me. No problem. So let's dive right in because this is the ninth book of the series. How do you keep young readers coming back? I imagine it is not easy. <laughs> it's not. I mean, this is sort of the question I have every time I sit down to write the next book. Like, how do I do it again? How do I get them to want to like this one? You know, um, I really think it kind of comes down to the characters. I try very hard to treat them like they're real and really kind of let them sort of run the show, so to speak, like just by asking myself, like, what would they do and everything I know about them? And it's a big cast. And so I feel like that also gives um, a variety to the readers. You know, they can kind of pick and choose which one they're going to really feel connected with. Because um, it's not just like one hero. It's it's sort of a team, kind of like Avengers or X-Men or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's like an ensemble cast. I love that. And you exactly. know, you, I heard that you have some training as a filmmaker, and we just saw that amazing kind of trailer for this for this book. Has your training as a filmmaker kind of helped you think cinematically and see the series before you ever put pen to paper and start going at it, or does it just evolve organically? It's definitely both. Um, you definitely want to have some sort of plan, especially for a series this big. Otherwise, it's just going to feel like a runaway train and you're never going to get anywhere. So you kind of need to have something that is like a foundation to the story that no matter what, you're not going to change that. But at the same time, you know, when I was in um, film school, they really instilled in us the fact that your first ideas are rarely your best ideas. They're usually the most predictable and, you know, the least exciting. Oh. And so... I definitely wanted to leave room for the fact that, yes, when I came up with this series that I came up with a lot of ideas, but some of those were first ideas and over the 10 years, <laughs> like leave room for new things, you know, for moments where it's like, oh, that's so much better than what I ever thought of before. Let's go with that. Yes, I so. like that. I think that could be uh, a thing for any creative out there, like your first your first idea may not always be the, the, the best, kind of flush it out. I like that. Now, can we expect to see this series on the big screen or, you know, streaming somewhere? I'm always like propositioning myself to be like a leading lady in something. So I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's like cross every finger and toe and let's hope for the best. I mean, there's there's stuff behind the scenes that's going on that I'm never allowed to talk about. But it's also, you know, Hollywood is a long game and this is a very expensive series to produce. So that slows it down even more. And what's great is that we have a team that is very committed to trying to make sure that if it does get made, it is one of the good ones and not one of those ones where you're like, oh, yeah, that was a book I love. <laughs> I didn't do it right, you know? So that slows it down, but we're just, we're all really, really hoping that we'll just keep the ball rolling and that it will get there. Be, and that by then it, readers will be like, yes, this was everything we wanted. It's so worth the wait. Yes, I was just about to say, your fans are gonna be so thankful that you did do that. <laughs> And you know what? I know how those contracts can be sometimes, so I won't get you in trouble. I was going to ask, like, just blink <laughs> once or twice if we can expect to see it, but I won't get you in trouble. Now, can you tell us, uh, this is book number nine. Are we going to see a 10? Yes. In fact, I am working on number 10 now. So, um, and I, I want to make that very clear because once again, I end the book on yet another one of my famous cliffhangers. So don't worry. This is not the end readers. There's <laughs> another book coming and I am writing as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Now we were talking about how this isn't like an ensemble cast, but there's a special character in here, like Sophie. Can you tell me a little bit about her? Yeah, so she's technically like the main character of the series. And um, when we meet her, she thinks she's human, but she's also hiding that she has these abilities. She can read minds and move things with her minds. And she doesn't understand why she can do these things. And so she's hiding them. And then she comes to find out that it's because she's not human. And she belongs to this secret world called the Lost Cities. And then just as she's sort of settling into her new world and really kind of feeling like, okay, this must be 
where I belong. I'm finally not going to have to hide things anymore. I'm finally not going to be different. She realizes, yeah. oh no, I'm very much still different. Like there are reasons people hid me and there's this big conspiracy that I'm caught up in. And that's really her journey throughout the series is really kind of learning to accept herself. Yeah, she, I love that. I, I can definitely see why young people would be drawn to something like this. It kind of mirrors their story as they go through life. So thank you so much, Shannon, for writing it and giving us all these series. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. <laughs>